Hey guys, my name is Iswans. Welcome to another Blender 2.8 tutorial. In this one, we're going to be looking at something that uh, I have been using in my previous time lapses, uh, but I haven't really talked about or explained how it works, and that is pointiness in Blender. Uh, so, uh, if we maybe we, let's just use this model. If uh, it only works in cycles currently, I don't know if it will be supported for EV uh, after. Uh, the final version of Blender is released, uh, but uh, for now it only works in cycles. So make sure to change the renderer uh, to the render engine to cycles, and then go to shading, and uh, make sure you are in render mode uh, because it won't work in this material mode. Uh, because uh, when you switch your renderer engine uh, to to cycles, uh, the render the renderer tab here uh, will be cycles, and uh, the material tab here will be using EV uh, instead of cycles. So Let's go back to uh, uh, cycles here. And uh, uh, what we want to look at is pointness. And uh, to add that in, in your shaders, you just, again, add, edit, add it like any other, other uh, node. So shift A, input, and then find geometry. So you can see a list of uh, different things about the object. And uh, we have the position. So to, you can preview each node here. Uh, by holding down control shift and then clicking on the node so we can preview the position this will just give you a rough position i don't know how how it's calculated but i think it's uh, the position of every vertex on on the object so in a color grid so a uh, position we have normal uh, tangent a uh, true normal uh, incoming with parameter back calling uh, what we want to look at is uh, this pointness uh, right now you can see that uh, you don't really see anything yet uh, it uh, right now I, th I think it only works when you have a high dense mesh uh, that means that uh, your mesh is has a lot of subdivisions and uh, right now that's why you're not seeing anything here so we need to first subdivide this a few times or just go under uh, modifiers and add uh, a multi-resolution uh, modifier and then change uh, the operation here from from this option to simple and then subdivide a few times uh, if you leave it at this it will just uh, work as a subdivision surface we want it to be uh, to maintain uh, the shape of the cube uh, we just want those polygons uh, so if we go back to shading uh, we can see you start you start you're starting to see some kind of highlighting around the edges and that to make that highlighting of the edges or point areas, pointy areas are pr more pronounced, we need to add uh, a color ramp to control the contrast. So let's do that, shift A, then uh, convert color ramp and uh, put it between uh, the, this and uh, the preview. Now we can control the contrast here. Now you're starting to see those uh, sharp areas coming out being highlighted. So I found uh, the values that work well are uh, uh, 0 0.45 for the black, sorry, uh, 0 0.45 for the black, and then uh, 0 0.5 for white. Okay, but I think for this object, that might be different. So think around that. Uh, so you might be wondering, how can this, where is this going to be useful? Uh, so let's, let me show you something. Uh, you can use this as a mask uh, to map out, uh, to, to mask out different materials. So let's say, let's connect this. Let's use this as the material. Let's say we have two materials here. And now we want some areas to be metallic and some areas to be uh, plastic. Uh, we can use this map here uh, to, sh to, to make the edges or the sharp points metallic and the, uh, the rest of the, the object uh, plastic. So we can create two materials. Uh, one will be metallic like that and the, nav and the other one uh, can remain plastic. And then we can reduce the reflections here. And then we can mix this with a mixed shader. So shift A shader and then mix sh 
shader. Uh, okay, now we can connect this like this, and now we can bring this and uh, use it as the factor. So you can see uh, there is, you can see the difference there, but uh, because we don't have anything in the background, uh, our object uh, has nothing to reflect. So we can go to the world settings and add a background environment, background, or find something. Just add this. So let's see the settings. I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, th there is some reflection there. And maybe we can change uh, the color here so that it comes out more, as you can see it there. Let's see. So this other area will take up this material and uh, maybe you can also give it a different color. So you can also contro control the contrast here, like that. Or let's use it on a more detailed uh, object. So let's try, let's add, let's delete this cube and then add the monkey. I'll go to layout, add to shading. I'll just use the material we have already used. So I'll pick it directly there. You can see already it has been applied to the object like that. Uh, so to make these uh, point areas even stand out more, we can add a, sub, a subdivision surface to the modifier. So subdivisions, let's see, it gives us much con ma more contrast on the sharp areas. And uh, if we increase the view, it even makes those sharp areas. So the more resolution your object has, the more sharp are those edges will stand out. Uh, so let's give it this, this, let's give this a smooth shading. Uh, so you can see we have that. Uh, so another way to use this is, uh, let's remove, let's just use one material, one a principal shader like this, remove this add shader, uh, connect, so you see, this is how our, our, our object looks. But, uh, let's increase the contrast a bit. Make these a bit sharper. like that and uh, let's make sure that we are previewing the material so we can use this in uh, let's see we can add so what I want to do is to create a metal uh, that has some worn out areas and uh, let's reduce the roughness here so let's say this is this is how a brand new uh, Suzanne would look a brand new red metallic Suzanne would look and uh, we want to give it some worn out parts. And uh, usually the worn out parts are the ones that are, are, are the, the edges or pointy parts of the object because uh, they are always, they experience more friction than, than any other surface of the object. Uh, so, and this uh, pointiness is a way, is a good node uh, to, to create that illusion of, uh, of an object uh, getting worn out. So, you can see these areas might, we might give them a different uh, brighter uh, red uh, to, make, to, to make, it, make them different from this red. Uh, so what we can do is add a color, mix RGB, and uh, let's connect this. Uh, this is going to be the factor. Uh, going to be the factor. So if we, if we give the first color, the base color, uh, this red, so this is the red we want to use for the base color. And then the worn out red maybe would be around 
would look a bit like that and uh, we can use that as the base color maybe make it more pronounced I think because of the reflection oh, you're not seeing uh, that worn out area so we can use this map again under roughness So that, let's see, let's, let's first take out this. We need more contrast, I guess. Okay, so this needs to be inverted because I see uh, the sharp areas have rough, rough uh, reflections while uh, the, the smooth areas don't have sharp ref reflections, uh, which is and, uh, it's supposed to be the other way around. So we need to switch these uh, direction to these directions. Let's make sure that this is working correctly as we expect it. Uh, switch, flip again. Oh, let's add invert. Let me preview this. Yes, so are these dark areas uh, the ones we want to be worn out, to have sharp re reflections. So we can increase the contrast a bit. And if we preview this, you can see now they have sharp uh, reflections and uh, we can also use uh, this color again here. So you can see uh, that uh, are these exposed areas have a uh, a much worn out uh, color than uh, these here. And now we can also maybe reduce the invert here so that uh, these areas also have a bit of reflections. And uh, maybe we can just separate these here. Remember the black uh, represents areas that are supposed to be sharp, uh, ha supposed to have sharp reflections and the white areas are areas that are supposed to have uh, rough reflections. Uh, but uh, because we have inverted it here, uh, that gets flipped around here, and uh, the black areas are areas that have um, a br uh, these brushed reflection or rough reflections. Uh, but uh, we don't want it to be that sharp, so we can make it a bit lighter. So that is, is rough re reflections, but uh, not that rough. And uh, maybe, yeah, I think that would represent a good worn out object. So you can see those areas are worn out. It's like uh, this has been brushed a bit in different areas. And uh, the awesome thing about this is that uh, if you have, say, a cube, like this, uh, this um, you can apply the same material to this, and uh, you will get uh, the same results. Uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, this doesn't have enough ref uh, enough resolution, so we can add uh, the subdivision, the multi-resolution, uh, subdivide this a bit, and you can see that uh, the rough reflections, uh, this texture is coming up. I uh, guess we can also add, before we do this, we can add a bevel modifier to maintain the shape and then maybe reduce the width a bit, uh, give it a segment of two and add then a subdivision surface. Uh, this will give the object uh, the resolution, the subdivision will give the object uh, the, res the, the resolution necessary to apply the pointness and the bevel, the bevel tool will maintain the shape of the object. 
uh, without making it collapse like if it was if we didn't add the bevel it will just collapse like this uh, but uh, the bevel ma helps maintain uh, that uh, shape so you can also go to edit mode and uh, start editing the shape you want and you can see uh, the effect you get you will have worn out areas like that uh, we can increase the preview here and uh, give this a smooth shading and you can see just look at those edges how they are getting worn out and uh, if we add more here more detail here you can easily make that look super awesome uh, maybe another thing you can add uh, since we have already looked at uh, the ambient occlusion input we can add that as well ambient occlusion see how it looks uh, we can add uh, the color ramp convert color ramp to control the contrast so we want really sharp contrast something like that and we can mix that color mix color mix RGB mix that with the color I change this to multiply increase the factor you can preview this just to make those uh, corners inside parts a bit darker yeah, so that's how you use pointiness in Blender 2.8. Uh, it's the same steps you can use in Blender 2.7. Uh, so I think when, by the time uh, this version of Blender 2.8 is finalized, uh, this feature might be supported in Blender EV, but right now it's not supported. So if we change, you can see that uh, this effect is not applied anywhere on our mesh. Thank you for watching.